How's it going everybody? This is another album review slash, slash dissection of Method Man, Mudface. And this is not just the Mudface album, it's the deluxe version of Mudface. This is Red Man. Oh, Red Man. <laughs> Sorry, that's gonna be... <laughs> Red Man, Mudface. No, we're I've listened to so much we're Method Man. You're fucked. I've listened you're to so much Method Man today. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, wow. You ready? You want to get back in, straight into the track by track? You we'll do a track by track. 22 tracks. Track number it's one. A, it's a long one. Uh, track number one. Dr. Tevis. I didn't know this, but apparently, like, Red Man is known for being the doctor. Actually, I want to pre- preface this. This is, like, I, I had heard maybe, like, two or three Red Man songs or even, like, features uh, up until now. He might have heard a little more than me, but uh, I've heard a few songs were on Sway in the Morning this one morning, and that's a, about it. I yeah. know that our audio uh, engineer in our school really likes him. But yeah. Big ups to Kyan Smith, whatever. Yeah, it's Kyan Smith. Okay. Sure. okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, let me just get uh, my background. Uh, I I generally uh, know more about hi- old school hip-hop, but not a whole lot of Red Man that I listen to. Yeah. He wasn't huge. Uh, Method Man and Red Man, I remember the TV show. I remember some of the songs he did. I remember Red Man from that Christina Aguilera song, Dirty. It was barking all over that song. It was pretty cool. I, I was known to be like a funny guy, but never listened to too much of his music. So this is still the most mu- most red man I've ever listened to is today. Yeah, me yeah. too, for sure. Okay, track number one, Dr. Tevis, the intro, featuring Josh Gannett. Mm-hmm. Uh, so immediately, uh, I did a bit. immediately he's playing off of the doctor nickname that you, yeah. were, you were talking about. He was kind of like a mad scientist vibe. He's cutting some dude up. And then he's like, you're going to have to give him mouth to mouth. He's like, no, fuck that. Yeah. Like, I, 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 he's going to die from my mouth like, to mouth. He's like, shit. Like, yeah, it's fucking hilarious. Great opener. Like, the, the you put this on any album uh, as the first thing, and I'm going to want to hear more. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. great vibes right off the bat. It was a funny little skit, and he's got, like, another character in this. He's a doctor, and he's got the other character, piece of shit, and he keeps calling him piece of shit in this. Yeah. And I thought it was really funny. Yeah. And they're, like, cutting somebody open. You don't really know what the fuck's going on, but it's... Funny. Yeah, it's one of those things yeah. where you like really like use your imagination for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, track number two, uh, the first song on this one is "Was Really Good." Um, this one had no features on it. This is like a very like attitude kind of cocky, braggadocious kind of record. Um, he made a statement. It was a nice short song, sort of. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of really short songs that are we call it personality pieces. <laughs> That just sort of give you the whole feel, the whole vibe of what the next few songs are going to be like until the next interlude. And it's just sort of like uh, like sort of insight into the attitude of mm. that portion of the album. And it was nice. It sounded really good. And it was only about a minute long, maybe a little bit yeah, longer than that. Like yeah, something like that. And uh, this was, like, obviously it's the first real song because the intro wasn't necessarily a song. So it's like the first uh, side of the production we're hearing, not only just his rapping, but immediately I love the beat. Yeah, and like that yeah. kind of that stayed throughout the entirety of the album. Yeah, not to spoil too much, but I'm not sure if it was like that on this one, but mo- probably more than eighty percent of this of the songs on this album had piano beats. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if this done it, but I know it had a beat that I really liked, and it was yeah. a boast track, which usually I'm like, eh, the boast track, you know, that any any rapper can do that. But what I'm realizing now is that even on songs that don't seem like they have that much substance, it's just part of. Like Red Man's personality and Red Man's flow is his yeah. substance. Right? Yeah. So like even for a boast track, this is incredibly lyrical. Uh like crazy references here and there. He goes from fucking that's on the next one actually, but uh, yeah. Oh, crazy flow also, and I yeah. love the hook. The hook yeah. Is, yeah. Um, track number three. No, this is you. Is it? Oh, it is. Uh, Beastin or Bracket M C A Bracket. Uh. Okay, immediately off this, uh, I, I think before the beat even like faded in, we had like a like a referee whistle, right? Yeah. I ain't like that. I understand like that could have that could be me just having my fucking like coma CDGP thing, mm-hmm. but it made me feel sick. It was like two and, like, seconds. No, it went throughout the entire song. Oh, did it? Yeah. yeah. I but uh, didn't notice it too much. Yeah, like the certain sounds I hear, and it makes me like feel generally ill. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean it's a bad sound. That just means like that, that's just what my brain that's correlates just the it to. That it has yeah, to you. That's and the ref, like the referee whistle made me feel sick. So this was a, a weird song for me, but I, I liked it. Like it, uh, this showed, it wasn't one of my favorite ones. It was another Bose track, which mm-hmm. kind of made me fear that it was gonna be kind of like that throughout the entirety of the album. But he showed on this how wide his vocabulary was. Yeah, and I, I think that was why it was placed there. Like a, yeah. yeah, and then this song is called Beastin MCA, 
if you don't know who MCA is, MCA is one of the members of the Beastie Boys. But I didn't necessarily get, and I'll have to probably listen to the song again to get that, but I didn't necessarily get the connection from the song to the Beastie Boys or MCA. I don't really know what that connection was, but it was to me the song was like a, a vibey party song for mature people. Yeah. It was about not being with like badass bitches. It was about being with like girls with jobs and ind- independent girls. Like okay, partying yeah. with girls like that. So it was like a it was like a mature party song because yeah. he's oh, just you know, a cool he's take. Come along like that's that's interesting. I yeah. think that's that's unique if anything. Yeah, it's unique and it's a song for specific types of people. Mm. Uh, track number four is getting inside or getting inside. Look at me just being so Canadian. <laughs> getting inside. Uh, getting inside. Uh, this song was a smooth, chillin', get fucked up on the couch, yeah. party a little bit kind of song. Um, a lot of wordplay, a lot of really good lyricism in this uh, in this song. A lot of more interesting vocabulary, interesting references, interesting similes and metaphors. Mm. All stuff that I love. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this was the first song for me personally that kind of stuck out. Like the first thing I did when I heard this song was put a star next to it because I was like, okay, this is gonna it's gonna be a crazy one, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, dope beat. The one thing about this beat that kind of carried on throughout the rest of the album is that. All these beats, as as simple as they sound, as simplistic as his beats are in this, I'm not sure he's even producing these. But as simplistic yeah. as the beats are, they all have so many layers, so many aspects, yes. and they all progress, yeah. right? And even if that progressing is just maybe like cutting out the beat every now and then, it keeps it fresh, right? Yeah. And this a great job of that on this. Yeah. And this is also the first uh, song where I really got a sense of how crazy his his references and the lyrics can be. Like he go, he went from tribe. To the Pacquiao Mayweather fight, yeah, in the same line, yeah, and like that carries on though, like that's every line for him. Yeah, that's every song. Yeah, and it's fucking very, very entertaining to listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, next one is you. Is it? Oh, it is. Uh, Muddy Island. This one's a skit. Yeah, we were. This is a weird one, boys. Uh, we were, <laughs> <laughs> we were really excited about this because we we're like, oh, like this is super out there. You know, we gotta find out what the real meaning is. I'm here jotting down my theory towards what it really means, and I'll, I'll tell you in a sec. But basically, talking about Muddy Island, it's like a field trip or some shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the kids start getting eaten by this mud monster, and. Which we assume is Mud Face, which is yeah. the cover of the album. And my theory here's here's what I wrote: uh, uh, Doctor and piece of shit who from from like the, the beginning <laughs> skit uh, made this monster. Like when they were doing the surgery thing, they were making a monster, and I thought that was uh, shaping today's generation of hip hop. The monster being Mud Face, uh, being Red Man, saying like Red Man is shaping today's generation yeah. of hip hop, and like even maybe today's youth in a sense, but. I then realized I was being way too uh, complicated yeah. about it. He didn't talk about this ever again. Yeah, like, yeah, This did not come up after this song, and I don't know what this thing means. Yeah, because, yeah, that takes away so much value from this track because it could have been so interesting. Yeah. Like, to us, we were listening to it like, whoa, what was that? It was funny. It was interesting. Yeah. It was way out of left field. You know, based on the songs before that, you didn't see this one really coming, mm. you know, with that, like, news reporter kind of telling a story angle. And then they just got rid of this like I just don't know what, what the plan was with it they just tossed it and I don't know I felt like a waste of time yeah yeah uh, this next song is uh, N-word like me not like me <laughs> <laughs> it's the name of the not song not like me <laughs> <laughs> because we're not yeah so it's uh, <laughs> the song is called N-word like me uh, it's uh, this song has like a reggae beat sped up which I really thought it was a good beat. Yeah, I good thought the vibes. production, a lot of layers on it. Um, the lyricism, again, was flawless on this track. What I have down here. Uh, this song just really displayed this guy's timing is, and his execution. Mm-hmm. You know, even if he didn't have a whole lot with the beat, you know, it, like the same way that Drake or Kendrick Lamar may have with, you know, the kind of access to beats that they have, he has different kinds of beats. But the way he raps over them, the way he writes the perfect kind of lyrics for those songs he really executes and his mm. timing is veteran yeah really though yeah i got a sense of that uh from like the very beginning of yeah. the song he the way he intros the verse like the very first words of this song such a strong start right i can't remember exactly what he said and then he goes on to he references a bunch of rappers yeah a million different references to we that i didn't even mm. know could be like yeah like we we'll, we'll hear that throughout the entirety of the album but i thought something was going on with the many references to rappers like he's talking about uh 
what is it, uh, graduation Carter and T-Pain with all within like three lines maybe and I was like oh then maybe I was right about the skit from before I wasn't but uh <laughs> yeah and I'll, yeah Dope Beat also I, it's a good song I put a star next to it I like it. absolutely and with the weed references uh, like he used weed analogies to tell the stories that he was telling yeah. and I thought it was pretty creative it's like a, putting a, like a big part of his personality in there yeah like, it wasn't just like a stoner track it was like a like a track by a stoner like, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, me? no you what? Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> uh, dope man, uh, carrying the weed thing, featuring Stress <laughs> Uh I like this a lot. I put three big old stars next to it, which is the most stars I've given it up until this point. Dope intro, mm -hmm. uh, which was like I think a part of the hook was in the intro, but not the full hook. Yeah. And I like immediately gave like really good vibes, and then the beat progressed so much. And this mm -hmm. was where I first got a sense of the fact that he was going to be using piano beats a lot, and uh, I loved it like right yeah. off the bat. Like it's not, it's not those beats with pianos where the piano kind of controls the beat it's like there's a piano keeping up with the tempo of his flow mm -hmm. but then you still have your bass and your drums and that's like, right yeah, yeah. And I, I like that a lot and uh, uh, the first verse was crazy yeah the first verse was really good uh, this song was funny yeah. like he kept with the humor um, which tells you so much about Redman's the, how serious he takes himself and is so much about his personality like you said the beat was great and I thought the hook was so catchy yeah. on this one yeah really the, yeah. one of the catchiest I can't remember it though uh, not off the top of my head, but something to being uh, something in, with the dope man. Yeah, obviously. Pa apparently. Yeah. Maybe it's like a jump man. Yeah. <laughs> not like jump man. Not, nothing is like jump man, hopefully, ever. Wow. Again. Yeah. <clears throat> Your turn. Uh, this next track is track number eight, Let It Go. And Let this. It go. Let it go. No, it's not like that at all. Uh, <laughs> this is the first track on, the, on this album where he comes in with a more like. Uh, current futuristic type of 808 mm. beat like heavier beats that are you know a lot like what you hear on the radio um, but not not necessarily the lyrics and he's just on this one he's still funny uh, it, he ends it off with a skit in the convenience store yeah, that was this a really is, interesting skit too yeah. I like that actually and this is just basically what he's saying on this one is all these things that could be issues all these things that are problems that might piss you off or whatever just sit back smoke some weed and just let it go. Yeah, really. But like throughout that, and like, like I really like the contrast between like kind of the funny and like chill outlook on it, and mm -hmm. like the funny skit. But the actual verses themselves, and even the beat, uh, was like aggressive, right? Yeah, that's really cool contrast. He's got a bunch of different things going on at the same time, but it's not overwhelming. It's and not overwhelming, that's... and the transitions are seamless. Like it yeah, just really though fucking great. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, next one, uh, number nine, bars. I fucking love this one. Yeah. Uh, my hope, my hopes were set super high just because like the song was called, <laughs> it's bars. called bars. So I was like, okay, it's gonna be fucking crazy, and then it was right. Yeah. You got the same lyricism, the same crazy ass references, the same fucking uh, flow, but like times two, like yeah. it was so good, and I loved it. And uh, yeah, all I wrote here was uh, hopes are high. Holy fuck, lyrics. Uh, oh, uh, dope hook. Yeah, it was dope hook uh, on bars. He really comes with bars. He comes with a harder beat on this one, um, mm -hmm. which is a little bit a little bit of a change up. Piano still though, right? Piano still, but it was still like more aggressive, more kind of like raw, old school kind of hip hop. Yeah, yeah. What you kind of want to hear from Redman if you're a Redman fan, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, and he was hilarious with his metaphors on this one. Like mm -hmm. I, that's one of my favorite things about this album is how f how much of a sense of humor you really get out of it. Yeah, like and how well of a comedian he really is. It's, right? it's what, like what we were touching on before, though, right? Like, uh, he may not, like, this album as a piece may not have substance, but every line of his is substance, yeah. right? He get like, even a boast track has references that you would get on some songs today that are considered to have substance. Yeah. And, like, that's, like, like it, he, he puts so much of his personality in yeah. it. Like, it's by no means a concept album. Like yeah, this is yeah. not Good Kid, Mad City kind of concept album. Mm. This is like each yeah, like each line, each verse is just fucking action packed with lyrics and references that mm. are just so dope. And it keeps it fresh too. Yeah, yeah, keeps it always fresh. And, and even though he was talking a lot about a lot of the same things on the song that he has on previous songs, it was still different. Mm. Yeah, uh, track number ten is High to Come Down. And this is literally a relaxing, easy listening kind of vibey, not vibey, but easy going kind of hip hop song about coming down from being high. Yeah. And getting high again. Yeah, like uh, she does really, really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. It was pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. This is, 
track six was a sped up reggae reggae beat. This is like a slowed down reggae beat, so it's mm. like a chill islandy vibe, which is fucking awesome. Yeah, it was in like a really different vibe, right? Yeah, like it was a different beat, different vibe, but like good vibes at the same time. I thought it was like a really good change of pace. Yeah, I think one thing about this album that I noticed just before we even got halfway through the album, probably around this area, is that I'm noticing it looks like Redman is like really paid attention to what track he was putting where. Mm-hmm. And he wanted like anybody who's listening, like like me for example, listening to Red Man for the first time, within listening to the first half of the album, I already have a fantastic idea of what the rest of his music sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. uh yeah, like he's really uh I think he definitely planned this album around that and that's a good example. Veteran track listing for sure, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, track number eleven. Sorry, I thought that was you that time. I it's okay. No, people at always this. think it's me. <laughs> won't be feeling. Uh, yeah, won't be feeling. Uh, the Des remix. Yeah, uh, I gave this one five stars. Oh yeah, this is a had like a long intro, a long outro, like, kind of like talkative. It sounds like he's kind of like on a radio show or some shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I was I was getting weird vibes because I was like, oh, it's gonna be one of those where like it talks for way too fucking long. Yeah. And then uh, no, it was the favorite beat so far. Like, yeah. The piano beat again. Pretty much all these beats are pianos. Fucking bars beyond all belief. And uh, yeah, I th- this was top three favorite songs probably oh yeah this is his most layered beat on this album yeah a lot uh, of layers yeah a lot of layers a lot of switch ups uh, was this the one with really all the different like it would pause and go to a different sample yeah like that's what like beat. great yeah. progression kept it yeah. fresh the entire time I know the hook was fucking crazy yeah the hook I mean like, on with, all with these the, songs I think that like, he nailed the hook this is one of the like there were two or three times about this album where the hook went off I mean you just looked at each other yeah like oh shit yeah. and, like this was one of those songs for us yeah, this song was just this song. What it's about is basically like loving weed, and weed will always be there for you, like no matter what. Mm-hmm. Like as long as you've uh, you've got some weed, you're good to go. It's like herpes. Like you, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the, you won't be fiending unless you have weed. So I guess, of course. Yeah. Right. If you're, yeah, a weed head. Uh, number tra- number twelve. Stuff, try yeah, not weed head man. Old school. Uh, track number twelve, <laughs> undeniable, featuring Runt Dog and Ready Rock. Uh, this is like a harder kind of cocky song um, like a, definitely a boast track definitely a boast track and I felt like this is sort of your break from Redman a little bit you get more features mm. you get two other verses from, from different artists and just gives you a little break of Redman's whole yeah, style it was, this it was album, a, which was definitely nice. a good switch up mm-hmm. it was one of the only beats that didn't have a piano first of all no piano whatsoever on yeah. this one uh, like a little more aggressive good progression but Throw all of that except for maybe the second verse, which wasn't even Redman. Yeah, I thought it was a weaker track. I thought it was a weaker track as well. Uh, for me, it did kind of get stale. Mm. Um, it was kind of similar to some of the other tracks in the first half of, half of this album, so it just sounded repetitive. Yeah, after maybe the first verse. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you. What? You did eleven, no so you do thirteen, way. bro. Okay, I'm just so behind the ball. Like, I was gonna drink my coffee and everything. It's okay. Okay. I've got to preface this again. I love using the word preface. I say it a lot now. I mispronounce it probably. Unlucky number track 13. Go hard. Really was unlucky. Can we just, like, did you like this? I, I actually didn't mind this song. I just yeah, didn't I, like I, this song. I really liked the hook, actually. I thought it was really I, catchy. I thought it was, um, the hook was cool. And, like, there were, like, the, there were bars. But I, this is the weakest track on the album, in my opinion. In my opinion, I think track 11 was the weakest. Really? No, not not track eleven. Uh, we already passed it, but fuck it. it well, I don't think this was the weakest one. I actually did enjoy the hook on this. It, like it, it, it got stale for me. Like it didn't change at all. Like the vibes from Red Man I was getting before, where he keeps everything fresh and is always, you know, yeah. keeping up with it. The song, this one, I felt like it. Like the song really got ahead of me. And I don't know. Yeah, uh, the weakest track for me was actually track twelve. Okay. Um. Yeah, but this one was just about. It was just. I think this kind of song was on every single album. It's just, you know, you do everything hard, you know, mm. you go all in, you're, you're the shit and whatnot. And I don't know, it, it, all, it belongs on any hip hop album, in my opinion. And that's it's fair. it's a catchy, it was a catchy hook that I enjoyed. And fuck, like that's half the battle right there. If you have yeah. a dope hook, I think. That's one thing I think, like, especially in today's music is like we, people focus way too hard on the hooks to have a super catchy hook, but they're mm. super like, overplayed and lots of elements in them. Yeah. If you're gonna have a song, like, perfect example is Red Man, where he's really like, apart from maybe his beats, like his, his voice and his hooks are really simplistic, yeah. but he can still be super catchy. Like that really stands out yeah. to me. Like, yeah, and I get what you're saying about it being a weak track. I still do get that, even yeah. though I did like the hook and stuff, this album could have done without it. 
Yeah. It yeah. would have been okay without this song. Uh, yeah, fair. That's completely fair. Yeah. Uh, track number 14, this is the first interlude on this album. It's called Outspoken. I love this one. I put three stars next to this one. He comes with uh, more of a current, relevant, kind of futuristic beat. Yeah. More 808s. Very aggressive. Uh, it comes so hard with, uh, with his bars. He comes off with a faster pace on this one. Mm -hmm. So it switches it up again, you know, keeps it fresh. Uh, it shows a lot of outspoken lyrics to go with outspoken. Um, it's a shorter song. It is still an interlude, but it's not by any means a skit. It's still a song, but uh, another personality piece, mm -hmm. you know, it prefaces the next few songs, Ooh. you know, by giving you a different kind of vibe, different kind of attitude on it. And just uh, personality piece shows his personality, right? Mm. And that's what it does perfectly. It makes a statement on this song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I liked it. I, like, I thought it was really good. And it was like what you were saying with the personality piece or, I saw the words interlude, and I thought it was going to continue on with the skits. Yeah, same. And I was, I, was, oh, yeah. I was really expecting to like get more of the story, and I was really clenching onto it. And I, I was, honestly, I was a little upset when it wasn't that. Okay. But then once he got into the song, yeah, sort of graphing, yeah. I was like, holy shit, man. Like, what is this? Like, yeah. really good. Yeah. Very good. And uh, very progressive, kept it fresh, like he always does. But this one was more flow-related than beat-related. Mm -hmm. Like, he went, like, he started off really fast, like you said. Yeah. Then he slowed it down a bit for everybody. And like, yeah. that was, I liked that. Yeah. Uh, this is you. Track number 15, Hands Up, featuring Do It All and Mr. Cheeks. Mr. Cheeks sounds like a porn star. <laughs> First of all. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Uh, I got crazy Wu Tang vibes from this. Yeah. That was the first thing I thought was Wu Tang when I heard uh, like, yeah. the beat build up. Same here. Uh, but the, the song itself wasn't anything special, in my opinion. No, it wasn't. Uh, another song that maybe this album could have done without. Mm. I mean, it was I, I wish the beat was on a different song. Yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe with a different rapper. Like just yeah, yeah. Might have been meant for a different artist altogether. Um, yeah, this this album is 22 tracks, so there's going to be one or two tracks on, on uh, any good album that maybe it could have done without. It didn't really add too much to the story, but I did like the Wu-Tang feel because mm. I love Wu-Tang Clan, and I love anything that sounds relatively like it. And yeah, the beat did remind me of that, but the lyrics and subject matter or whatever didn't really represent that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That would have that been cool. Like, it, it like a cool. Wu-Tang-esque like, esque vibe. And then, like, Imagine uh, having the Method Man feature on that one. That would have been perfect. That would be like great. that would have been a really good idea, yeah. actually. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't really. Mr. Cheeks is not anything special. He's not. No, he's just a lonely ass porn star, man. <laughs> lonely ass porn star, you get. Yeah. That. So <laughs> you can, you can. Uh, track number sixteen. Uh, this is one of my most favorite tracks on this album. This is called Don Fiato. This is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. And uh, basically, he he starts this off with like a intro, like a, kind of a skit where he's saying. You got something to say, boy. Okay, this is really bothering me. Anybody in the comments, if you're reading this, what is this beat? I know this beat. Oh, I've right. heard this beat like two or three times, and I thought about it for the rest of the fucking like time we're listening to this. I was like, what was beat on track 16? What was the beat on track 16, though? And yeah. Fucking, I don't... We didn't, I clearly didn't it. have time to look this up. I for sure heard that beat before, but I loved it. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's it a uh, great beat. Uh, but what he's saying in the intro of the song is he's saying he wants elements on this beat. Mm. Like he wants, uh, and he wants like a, a, a traditional hip hop beat. Like he wants a real hip hop beat, something that real MCs vibe uh, can rock to, mm. you know. And he makes that statement before the song and prefaces, prefaces, what the fuck did I just say? Prefaces <laughs> the, uh, what the song is going to feel like. And he did a great job. I mean, it's a great beat, like you said. It felt very, very classic, old school. Um, when he says elements, what, I'm, I, what I think that he's alluding to is the five elements of hip-hop, and you definitely hear that in the beat, you know, like the jazz and, like, the soul, like funk, funk, and yeah. Yeah, just all those instruments and all those different kind of samples and sounds um, just laid over a very simple yeah. 808 drum, uh, drum beat and him just coming yeah. with, like, then, softer lyrics. And then, like, great progression, too. Yeah. That's, like, that's... That's one thing that I, I really liked about this is that like near the end we're getting mm -hmm. samples we did not expect. We had a few of those moments where we were like, What? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like this is definitely the best song in the album in my opinion. Yeah, and I appreciate this one because he he respects the art of MCing on this yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. And he educates his, his listeners. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I always like uh, I always like rappers or any any kind of artist who educate their viewers or listeners and things like that like ed educate their audience teach them more about the art form mm. and uh, he does that very well in this one yeah. one of the strongest track probably yeah yeah definitely uh, okay track number 17 uh, 
Lug and Fly featuring Method Man. Lug and Fly 2. Is it 2? Yeah. I didn't even write that down. Oh, yeah. Lug and Fly 2 featuring... It's like T-O-O, though. Yeah. Lug and Fly 2 featuring Method Man and Ready Rock. Or is it Rocks? No, Ready Rock. Uh, Ready this Rock. is the second appearance on this album. I think this beat fitted his flow more than a lot of the other beats on this album. Like, uh, yeah. like it may not have been my favorite beat, mm-hmm. but it fit his flow so well. And, like, the first thing I noticed was, like, wow, like, his... He's really got like a Nas vibe to it, like his like Nas sounding like Nas, but mm-hmm. I'm saying like his, like the his words sounded more like an instrument, than the like voice. raw like syllables. Yeah, yeah, like, you yeah. know, Syll- Art- yeah, syllables yeah. all in perfect the fucking alignment. Yeah. Like yeah, like, intentionally placing them in, like that, like scientifically writing these rhymes. Yeah, it's yeah. just and yeah. That was just, the first thing I noticed, and I fucking loved that. And this had a dope ass hook. Yeah, yeah, it did have a dope hook. This had a '70s funk sample in it, mm-hmm. which is cool. Like kind of that like. Pimp porn star kind of like yeah, the yeah. the guitar kind of riff thing. Yeah, you know, I uh, I can't really make that noise in my mouth, but if you listen to it, you'll know what I mean. Uh, Ready Rock killed his verse. He stood out to me more than Method Man's verse. Method Man, uh, he always brings brings his his a game. He did perform Wait, was, well. On was it. Method Man the second verse? Method Man was the third verse. Yeah, second verse is my favorite. Yeah, that was Ready Rock. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Ready Rock had a great. And it was a really smooth, upbeat kind of song, positive, mm-hmm. positive song. Yeah, and the features were really well chosen for the song. I thought. Yeah. Like, like with every with every verse, it like maybe not didn't get better because like verse two was my favorite, and in my opinion, and on most songs, the last verse is usually the most like impactful. Mm-hmm. And that maybe is one issue I have with this song, but like at the same time, like I, I don't know, I, I really don't have any any real complaints. With yeah, it's a good song. Yeah, absolutely. You. This is not me. Oh, okay. So uh, number eighteen <laughs> is <laughs> Hammer Time, and this is another interlude. Yeah, more uh, Wu Tang vibes. Yeah, more Wu Tang vibes. Uh, this is second. Uh, yeah, it's, it is a second interlude. So another personality piece. This is, I think, what it occurred to us. Mm. These are personality pieces that give you insight into his, into who he is, and just what the next few songs are going to be all about. Which is exactly what an interlude is supposed to do. So good for him on actually knowing how to use the interlude. That's veteran class right there uh, another funk sample on this one it's like a fun party song you know and it's short yeah like yeah. The short and sweet crazy bars which we expected that this thing was like the last interlude was crazy like I expected mm-hmm. like to kind of get the same vibe uh, I was taken away from the Wu-Tang beat though not with the Wu-Tang beat but like the Wu-Tang vibes in the beat and I thought that was really like I love that a lot yeah. I, I'm happy they finally had that sound on a good song like that was yeah yeah, yeah. I like that um, but it wasn't, you know, yeah, anything too great. Mm. Ready for the next one? Yeah. Ready to go? Okay. Uh, track number 19, N-Word What? <laughs> Why did we got to giggle every time we say N-Word? Because we talked about this before. We did talk about this before. It's aggressive as fuck. Like, it's a, it's a mean old song, but good vibes. Yeah. And uh, bars. Like, uh, crazy lyricism, back with the crazy, re- I guess the crazy-ass references never really went away. Like the, No, that's just him. Yeah, but, uh, like, that was a, a lot more relevant on this track, I thought, although this track kind of lacked progression, and for yeah. that, it was a little weaker for me. Yeah, same here. It was a slow building song. So yeah, very like, sl- yeah. Very it was sl- like it was like slow, and it didn't go. Anywhere. It plateaued. Yeah, and yeah. it didn't really go anywhere with it. Um, I, I I didn't really like too much except for one line, and I wrote that down. Is I got Islamic bitches wanted to bag dad, because he's <laughs> older and shit. You know, I thought it was funny. That's pretty cool. That was the one line that really like stood out to me. But other than that, I don't know. The song I. You could have taken this completely out of this album. I kind of, okay. I kind of got that vibe with the rest of the song. Can we touch on that? Uh, this is the deluxe version of the album. Obviously, do we know when, like, the difference between the real version and the deluxe version? Um, I'm, uh, I'm guessing it was after track eighteen. I think yeah. track eighteen was an introduction if, to the if, deluxe. If these last like one, two, three, four, if these last five songs are all bonus tracks, mm-hmm. then I'm really not that upset about it, right? I'm not, bonus tracks are bonus tracks. But there's a couple songs but, that I fucking loved. I think there were one or two here. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I don't really have anything else to say about nineteen. That was just like a weaker song in my opinion. Like. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, track number twenty. This is a song that really hits home to me, because this is somebody got robbed. And I got robbed the other He's day. A thief. Yeah, no, I got robbed. Steals from the homeless. Somebody fucking robbed my bobbler and my pipe. They didn't rob your bobbler. They stole. They robbed you and stole your bobbler. See, I'm pipe. just so distraught. I don't even know how to talk. <laughs> they fucking stole my bubbler and my pipe I know. and my broom. It'll be okay. My fucking broom. And your placemat. And yeah, a fucking well- doormat. Who steals a fucking welcome mat? 
Like, hey, I'm gonna steal your broom so I can clean up after I smoke with your tools, and then I'm gonna wipe my fucking feet afterwards. Yeah. Because like, I'm a nice thief. If you're watching this, fuck you. Um, Ugh. But anyways, it's just, like, I think the metaphor in here is he's talking about robbing people or trying to rob people, and I think what the metaphor here it really is is that he's just talking about like surprising people and just stealing the game. Yeah, and then it was a really cool like uh, I really liked the subject matter like like yeah. that like yeah. that was really cool like sense of substance. Yeah. But aside from that, with like the the beat was kind of simplistic, but it didn't progress, and yeah, like I think like the subject matter is the only thing that kept this song alive for me, and like the rest of it was kind of stale. But this is this is the song, and I put it in the notes here. This is the song where they had like the da 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 da. This was that. This one? was that really? song. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. They had that twice where they had like the beat break into that mm-hmm. and then they had it break into something else which I can't remember what it was but it was it was okay. at the perfect timing and this yeah. is another one where he shows off his lyrical timing. Yeah, and his, yeah. Like, sil- his, like his the way he puts his syllables is so mathematical mm, really and it's good. like so methodical like he is a genius when it comes his to that. His feature too actually like come to think of it like now that now that you remind me of this was that song I, I did like this song quite a bit and like yeah. the feature in the song really helped. Yeah, like it, like it was almost like the same good like mathematical up. thing yeah. like you were saying. Like, I, I, yeah, good vibes. Yeah, good vibes. Well thought out. Yeah. <clears throat> Rockin' with Marley Mall, Marl, Marley Marl, Marley Marl. That's so hard for me to say. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Why is that hard for me to say? Uh, dope Marley Mall. Just say Marley Mall. Like that's how all the rappers say it. Dope beat. Catchy ass hook. Like I like the hook a lot. I'm slouching so much. I'm like shorter than you know. I'm six six. This isn't how this is supposed to work. Apparently, I'm fucking six eight. Mm-hmm. You have a short torso. <laughs> I do. I have long ass legs, long ass arms, and that's about it. Okay. Um. Rockin' with Marley Ma. <laughs> Rockin' with Marley Ma. <laughs> dope beat. Dope hook. Uh. Substance again. I give this five stars. I fucking love this. I love really this too. Song. Yeah. Like yeah. when you said that. Wait, no. There were some other bonus tracks that were actually good. This is that for me. This, yeah. Like yeah. This was hilarious lyrics. This was like a really b boy beat. This is like an eighties like, like b boying on the corner in nineteen eighty two kind of beat. Like that was. It just really mm-hmm. took you there. And his lyrics were hilarious. And he he was like slower, so you can really hear what he has to say. Yeah. And still enjoy the beat at the same time and get that whole vibe. So that was fucking awesome. And then he outros it with uh, with a saxophone. I like that a lot, actually. Yeah. I play tenor sax, so like that yeah. really really hit home for me. <laughs> but uh, like, yeah, that was that's a fucking crazy song. Yeah, uh, probably one of my favorites. For second sure. favorite. This is my second favorite. Song. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's so many good songs in this though. Yeah, it's there really are. Hard this to is say. a very actually. I'm not gonna spoil anything. <clears throat> Next song. Uh, number 22 is Pump Your Brakes. This is another one back with heavy 808s. I don't yeah. think there's any uh, piano sample on this one. No. Uh, very, it, like, very dark, though. It felt very dark and moody. It felt, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it was, like, very current, like, very modern type beat. Mm. Like, trendy. I liked that, actually, quite a bit. It's, it's a be, good switch up because he has such an array of beats. Was this the one with the auto tune on it? Uh, I believe this one. Well, is, it, must, it was probably this one. Yeah, the auto tune hook. Yeah, so he doesn't yeah. overuse the auto tune, which he used in a tasteful way. Yeah, and I you gotta respect that too, right? Like yeah, the, for sure, man. I, like the hook. Aside from the, I I don't think it was the auto tune one, man. Did you write down auto tune? I do not think it's the auto tune. Okay. I don't. I never write down auto tune. Yeah, this is not auto tune. Is never this that is, significant. I, I wrote down weak hook, so there's no way this is the auto tune. Okay, then no, this yeah. isn't. Sorry, um, guys. There's a lot of songs on this album, and this like our like, brains this are this only this so big. Week, I'm gonna show you. This is a weak page for me. I didn't have a pen for this part, so I used a marker. So like, this is my notes for this one. It could have been better. So I'm. We tried really fucking hard, but our brains are pieces. Yeah, this is a Saturday, and we're in school. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, Come it's on. dark outside. It is dark outside. It's fucking 7:35 p.m. on a Saturday, and we're 7:36 now. Anyways, go ahead. Riding. It's the last one. It's the outro. And was it a skit? I think it was a skit. Yeah, it was a skit. Uh, white people a, yeah. are riding. I liked that. No, yeah. this was this this was not a skit. Not this a skit, was, but he introed it with like it's a announcer, like yeah, a reporter yeah. saying like, like white people are riding. Like why are the white people riding? It was like, like that was after Method Man's Mudface album. Yeah, we're expecting that Method black Ma- people to Method ride. Method Man's Mud. Fuck, dude! <laughs> I listened to way too much Method Man today. Um, Muffin Man, uh, Red Man. 
Red Man, uh, Mudface album. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we're expecting African Americans to to riot, yeah. but <laughs> I mean, it's not today. <laughs> not <laughs> today. It's white people. Why are they rioting? I uh, yeah. and I don't think he answers that in the song. It was a progressive song. The bars were there. I love the intro, but I have one problem with not only this outro, but the entirety of the album that kind of ties into this outro. You, can, if you have anything else to say, you go. No, first. no, go for it, bro. Yeah. Classic. So here's the thing. I wasn't even looking at the camera. I was looking at the ceiling there. That was a little embarrassing. <coughs> Let's just okay. Um, outro. I really wanted to get the intro and the skip back. I was like, where the fuck is this? Where's the mud monster? What's happening? Like, was I right about my theory? Yeah. And I just wasn't. Like, it, not, not at least. Eh. I get that his substance is in his personality and his yeah, lyrics. Yeah, absolutely. And I respect that. I don't have any real problem with it. I just really wish that he tied in those weird, like those, the, yeah. those weird vibes. I wish he made something more of that. I wish and, it was um, more of a concept for sure. Like, yeah. just. Tie it all back it's in like and that, make it make sense. That could have made this album so much. Like this is a very good album. Definitely like, good this album. This is the, the highest rated album I'm gonna, gonna rate so far in this show. I fucking love this album to be honest. Documentary two. Second highest rated album on this uh on on this review playlist so far. But fucking, this could have been so much better if he made something more of that. Like, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that one. Some con. Yeah, if he continued on with that mud monster thing, I thought the mud monster was a great idea. Mud face and muddy waters and mud island and yeah. fuck, man. Like, there's so much to work with there. And yeah. just, he put so much emphasis on the detail of the lyrics mm. and the syllables all working out mathematically. Which, which was great. Right? Which like is that. fucking awesome. Yeah. That's, that's what makes this album so unique and so good. So mm-hmm. refreshing to hear from a veteran artist. But, like, if he had a little bit of that, like, this could have been like a really, really good album. Yeah, this would have been the highest rated so far. Absolutely, that. absolutely. Um, I, it, it almost ties into the thing that you were saying near like the the middle of the album while we're listening to it, is this almost feels like a spur of the moment album. Like he was like, "Yo, like I, I'm obviously I never stopped making music, but yeah. what if I just put out a fucking album next week? Yeah. What about his work on this for a few days and throw yeah. an album? That's almost the vibe I got just because he didn't." follow through with that and there was so much potential there yeah yeah and like all the songs did kind of tie into like the same kind of themes the same kind of like stories same way of telling the stories so it did feel like he just got in a studio mm. wrote an album and then here we have it but he had awesome beats on it too are you stoned no no are my eyes red like a little only near the corners maybe never mind sorry no, i'm not stoned <laughs> surprisingly enough people <laughs> surprisingly not <sighs> that surprises me um I don't know anything this else This is a say. sad day. Why is no, it a sad I'm day? I'm just joking. Let's, let's, let's put, uh, let's, let's give this thing a grade. Why did we rate, what, why did we rate the documentary one and two? Because those were the previously highest rated ones we did, I think. If we look back in the archives, I'll know for sure, but I think I gave documentary part two, like uh, documentary two, the second version, um, 8.75 or something like that, and the other one might have been like an 8.9. And I think you were in the same ballpark, maybe I'm, a little bit higher. I'm giving this an 8.5. This one's an 8.5 for you, eh? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I would give this one 8.5 as well. I hate to be a copycat. Yeah. But yeah, um, and the only thing's holding me back from giving this a, a better grade than 8.5 is the features could have been stronger. Mm. Like, I really, yeah. Or not even have as many features. Mm. And maybe just switch up the themes of some of the songs. A little I, bit more, yeah. Like I, at, I, this, at the same time, though, like the these are a lot less features than a lot of artists nowadays yeah. are using, and I respect that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was gonna say something. The one thing, uh, did I call you up by the way? No. Okay. Uh, one thing that I really uh, noticed about this, you probably didn't. Nobody else probably did except for me, because I'm fucking weird. This it was a dope fucking album with no black and white cover art. Ha. Explain that shit. First, first, first good mainstream album of the year. Because he doesn't have to pander to the mainstream. No he's so talented. Cover. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, like he's so underrated, and I liked all the all the things that he did do. But I wish he just took it a little bit further. And then mm-hmm. the whole mud monster thing kind of bothered me. It was like those two first first two uh, skits that that he did were just kind of a waste. Mm. Like you know, why should you even care about it if there's no conclusion to it? Yeah, or it was it a, yeah, it's kind of like album. we got built like a little story, and then the story just kind of 
plummeted. I think we're done. We done? We yeah, done? we're done. We're done. Are you guys done? I'm fucking done. It's late. I'm tired. I want to go home and fucking watch Netflix or something. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm Alex Robinson. I'm Brandon Budgeon. Bye. Peace the fuck out. I'm sorry.